Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to an, another edition of the Pocket Change Market Report. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverham. It sure is a pleasure seeing you guys here today, uh, where we are going to take a look at some of the most notable cherry picks from your pocket change, from coin roll hunting, or maybe from a local shop or show. All right, cherry picking is everybody's kind of like greatest pastime when it comes to coin collecting. It's a great way of adding pieces to your collection for not a whole lot of initial investment. All right, the big idea is here we find it, okay, we uh, legitimize the error or variety that we find in our coins, and then we go ahead and you know, possibly sell it, which is what we're going to talk about here, or we add it to our collection. It's real simple. Uh, another thing to point out, in this marker report, everything is raw, okay? What that means is a coin as is, pulled out of change, and then um, imaged, and then put on eBay. So a lot of the sales that you see here are, are all raw. They, there's no graded coins. There's no, you know, uh, extra incentive of actually sending these things out to a PCGS or NGC to get that third-party authentication. That's just not necessary. These are coins that you can just flip real easily, make some good money, some of them really good money. Uh, but we're going to talk about it today. Okay, this is the uh, the end of October edition. Halloween is here. Uh, but there's nothing scary about this list. There's some pretty, pretty nice coins um, that you guys need to really pay attention to uh, out in your change. So... Whatever you do this weekend, if you're out scoring some bank boxes or you're going out to a local show or shop, keep this in mind. There's a lot of unchecked territory out there for some of these varieties and errors. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into the first listing on eBay. All right, and uh, this is one of my favorites. Okay, so we have another 1972 Lincoln Memorial Cent Double Die Obris. This is the FS101. This is the Big Daddy. This is the one right here that's worth hundreds of dollars in, in, in just about any conceivable condition. Uh, very strong, as you'll know, based off of the images. These are all images directly from the seller's listings. The one thing I could say about this one is it looks like it was imaged and then imported onto their desktop or PC or whatever. Uh, but they actually took photos of the screen image uh, which is strange uh, this is just a strange way of listing these uh, but in any event this is the big one right here uh, a couple other noticeable uh, areas to point out the motto and liberty are all going to exhibit some of this really strong doubling the date of course is one of the biggest attributes of the coin that just cannot be denied so this one right here sold for 247 dollars and 50 cents the coin is Circulated, I would say it's probably an AU55 at best, um, but it just goes to show you that the coin is worth money even in most circulated grades. So that's a nice, nice little win there for the actual finder of this coin. Okay, so check out some of those uh, 2020 coinage. The U.S. Mint is going through and producing lots of these. And they are foregoing the actual quality control processes. So you're able to find some pretty nice, nice errors on a lot of these coins from pennies all the way up to quarters. Maybe even some of the dollar coins will exhibit some of these weird anomalies that we like to find. So the big selling point, and what I like most about this coin, is that there are close-up images. Because that's important. We want to know exactly what we're getting or what we're selling. When it comes to coins like this, so this 2020 Philadelphia Lincoln Shield scent exhibits what I would consider to be some really minor die chips and cracks on the reverse. As you can see, there's a couple close-up images that the seller had grouped together in one image, which I find very effective. Believe it or not, this one sold for $10.50, and this is something that customarily you're not going to be able to see with the naked eye, it's always good, if you can, to buy yourself a nice inexpensive jeweler's loop, somewhere 8 to 10 times power, is more than adequate for something like this. If you do need some, I have Amazon links below in the description box. They could be as cheap as 6 7 bucks. 
It's a worthwhile investment, so go check it out. So off-center straw coins are a very widely collected segment of error coins. There are specific dates that are considered to be keys. Okay, you just don't find them that often. What we have here is a 1952P Lincoln Wheat Cent. This one is off-center by about 60%, yet it still retains a full date. That's a key characteristic to the desirability of off-center struck coins, such as this. This one example here sold for $106.94. Based off of that final sell price, I could almost for certain say that this coin is one of those key dates. You just don't see a lot of wheat cents of the 40s and 50s with a full date in this condition, especially Philadelphia struck examples. So of course, the larger the off-center strike, the more desirable that they will be. Okay, It's a different story of, say, this was only 10% off-center than this pretty crazy-looking 60% off-center coin. Now, this one is ultra-deceptive for the very reason that it looks like damage. All right, so the coin is obviously pretty well circulated. The pictures aren't the greatest quality. Uh, you see some of this greasy gunk right here build up that wasn't even removed, which is which is fine. You generally don't want to, you know, do anything to jeopardize the integrity of the coin the overall look and appeal. You got to make sure that it continues to stay, for the most part, problem free. But on obverse right here, we have a really sizable strike through. So it could be a hardened piece of grease with a bunch of metal shavings and other debris mixed in that actually gets really hard. So when it falls off of a piece of the press or the dies or whatever it falls onto the coin, of course it's going to get struck through. Here's a close up. Uh, the word liberty is completely obliter obliterated, you know, save for the letter Y there. Uh, but this is a really nice find. Sold for $18.17. Outstanding. All right, so we got a couple pieces of currency. The first one here is a 1988A Series $20 Federal Reserve note. It's one of the last generational small-sized or small-head notes that in existence out there before the BEP converted over to a completely new design for counterfeit uh, balancing and all that great stuff. This one right here is an obvi obvious void on the left side of the note, which is called a gutter fold. This is a, a true blue error. Uh, the notes were printed with an actual wrinkle in the sheet of paper. So the first and second and third print all printed over this wrinkle before it was stretched out. This one right here sold for $128.95. And now on the back of it, you can see exactly where the gutter is. Only this one, this one here, the the final print of the reverse happened when the wrinkle was smoothed out of it, uh, because you have a a full print even on the area where the gutter fold is. Now this one right here, I can't even believe it circulated for a while. But what we have here is the 1988A. $1 Federal Reserve note that has a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, the note is damaged. Okay, you can see a big old chunk that's been torn off of here. The third print is inverted. You can see the serial numbers and the seals and all that is upside down. And furthermore, to make matters kind of complicated, the note is cut way off. I mean, way off. I mean, you can see the corresponding next note in the series but this one right here is just amazing. And the mere fact that it circulated for quite a while kind of speaks volumes to, to what we have here. This is not something that you typically see. It's interesting. It's intriguing. Uh, in spite of the issue of the tear, it is uh, quite a valuable note. And because of that, it sold for $196.68. This is a note of multiple errors. That I, again, I'm surprised even circulated. This would be something that I feel like probably would have been pulled out way, way more earlier than the condition of this note suggests. 
Here's another new Lincoln Shield scent, this time of 2019. It looks slightly off-center, but what we have here is a partial collar. Uh, you would have the coin seated in the striking chamber, and one, of the, one side of the collar wasn't correctly seated up against the coin, so when it was struck, the metal flow has to go somewhere, so it pushes out, so it gives that appearance of an off-center strike, but as you can see, you have a full obverse and reverse, which debunks the off-center strike and makes this a partial color. Really neat error, nonetheless. It's sold for a best offer of $9.95. Here's another off-center struck coin, this time a 1989 Philadelphia Lincoln Memorial Send. This one is uh, off-center, about 20%. I would say it's a copper coated zinc so you want to make sure with these coins that for the most part they are preserved and stored properly because with a little bit of moisture these coins can deteriorate right before your very eyes collecting off-center zinc coins is not my favorite uh, you're really dancing around a very slippery slope when it comes to the overall long-term preservation of these coins but still, this coin right here has seen some circulation. It's not brand new. It's funny how these coins just continue to get passed around like a peace pipe. It's crazy. This one right here sold for $17.50. The coin, because of its off-center nature, is still roughly about the size of a regular Lincoln cent. So to be able to find one of these in a roll, still possible at this uh, stage in the game. Now here's a coin I can guarantee that a lot of people have thrown back and just looking at this 1963D Lincoln Memorial, this one has certainly passed through great many hands before an eagle eye curious collector or non-collector rather took a good look at it. Is that damage or is that a legitimate error? And guess what? It is a legitimate error. If you look up close what we have here is a lamination peel that is retained. Now, when the lamination is retained and it's flipped up like this, you have a much more visually stunning coin that is more appealing to collectors of minor errors like this. But even one coin like this in this condition that has obviously seen some circulation did sell for $18.80. So keep that in mind. If you come across things like this, make sure you pull them out because they are worth a, a good little chunk of money, enough to get you and a buddy lunch, which sounds just, again, amazing in, in the context of what you can find off of one cent. Here's another really pleasing-looking off-center struck coin, this time a 1997 Philadelphia Jefferson Nickel. This one is off-center by about 60%. It is in pretty high grade. It's a very stunning grade. Now this coin right here is a great example of what the earlier planchets look like before the strike. Take a look at this planchet. See all the little planchet nicks right here? So when a coin is completely struck on a planchet that looks like this, the coin will look like this, very lustrous, as if there was nothing wrong with the blanks. But oftentimes before the strike, this is the beginning kind of stages of the product. You have a, a blank that has a lot of little nicks and pits in it. That's normal. And those type of nicks and pits, sometimes if the strike doesn't, you know, quite uh, maximize on the coin, uh, will still show some of these nicks and pits. Usually they're going to show up on the jawline of Jefferson here. They'll show up on the highest step devices of Monticello. I just wanted to point that out because some folks don't quite understand these little nicks and some would say, well, that's circulation nicks, you know, bag marks, and, you know, come out of a, a roll and things like that. I'm like, well, no, these do start out from their original planchet quality. Uh, and here you go. This is a great example. Now, this coin right here sold for $15.02, which kind of seems like a bargain considering it has a full date and it's in such high quality.
Check through your 2015 Homestead quarters. Now, the quality of the photos isn't fantastic on here, but this is a great example of a coin that you should still find today. The coin is already over five years old, which is fine. But again, when you look close enough, they got the double pump handles. This one has the double pump handle, and it's also got a doubled window pane right here. Um, this one right here is WDDR number five. So there are dozens of double die reverses for the Homestead Quarter. Now, they only exist on the Philadelphia Struck Coins. Make sure you check them out. It's always better to look at these under a magnifying glass. Usually one, two, or three of those window panes will have a doubled line or something on there, like this one. So make sure you look at that. But this one does have the top of the pump handle double. This one sold for $11.54. Uh, the big double die for this date is the 004, so that one is definitely one to look out for. So here's the 1956D. Now this one right here does not look like a fantastic candidate for anything, but as you can see it's got little nicks. This has quite a bit of damage all over the offers. It's got this little thing. It looks like it just might be... A defective piece of the planchet but these on the obverse are most definitely uh, nicks okay so what's so special about this it's a d over d rpm okay this is one of the bigger ones this is the fs 501 in the cherry pickers guide contrary to popular belief it is a very common rpm to find but it's one that you should be looking at every single time you go through wheat cents or just your rolls of banks uh, you know bank rolls uh, to find this one right here sold for $13.45 even with the surface issues So this is our spotlight coin and Again, I talked about a few, on a few of the coins that you absolutely Need a magnifier you need a good lighting source as well. I use a desk lamp myself Because you will never find one of these with a the naked eye this is just so happens to be on a 1993 Denver Lincoln Memorial set. Now, who in the world searches 1993D Lincolns? Not a lot of people do. But when you have savvy roll hunters that look at every single coin with a fine tooth comb, they will find something like this. Okay, you see all these little lines, these scrape lines right here? Those are feeder finger damage lines. Okay, the feeder finger has scraped onto the die surface and it translates into perfectly parallel lines on the coin. You can even see one right here under the ear, which is very interesting. Keep an eye out for these. They, these things exist on just about every conceivable date of coin. It doesn't matter if it's a penny, nickel, dime. You can find them. And again, you need to be able to see them. If you don't see them, guess what? You're going to lose out on an opportunity. This coin right here, for as minor as this error is, sold for $13.80. Keep this in mind. Some of the things that are well hidden are actually worth money, ladies and gentlemen. If you could, if you could take one penny out of every 100 that you find and then sell it for 10 bucks, I mean, that's a heck of a way to go out swinging, right? Am I, am I wrong on that? But that's a heck of a return, over a thousand times face for this one coin. Outstanding job to the seller for finding it. So here's a really nice 1970S large date Lincoln Memorial Cent. It's the common type because it is a large date. But this one has an extraordinary variety to it, okay? It's going to be the double die offers FS103 Cherry Pickers Guide variety. You can see the extra top horizontal bar of the seven here in the field you can see a little partial piece of the bottom of the seven and then on the zero you can see this bottom loop of the zero the doubled zero right here plain as day i've looked for this one it's actually a lot tougher than it looks and based off of the sale price you'll know why this is a very tough one to find but you should definitely look at every single one of your large date 70 s's a, a very common common date don't get me wrong this one here sold for $67.40. Bravo. Very nice find. Keep an eye out for these. 
Now this coin doesn't look like much. It's a 1926 Lincoln Wheat Cent, but there's a few things going for it that I, I find particularly endearing. Uh, the lamination on the obverse is very, very evident. But the overall quality of the planchet, you have what they call the wood graining effect, which is just an improperly annealed planchet to begin with. Very, very nice, very visually stunning in spite of its low grade. This is probably like a VG8 grade if I had to, you know, make an educated guess on the grade. Uh, but still, very desirable for those two reasons. And it sold for $18.50, where traditionally this would be worth about a nickel. There you go. Do not throw these back. I've seen them thrown back many a times. So here's another $1 Federal Reserve note, this time a 1974 series. Uh, so we got some, you know, alignment issues with the print. Uh, more so with the first print, you can see the that all the black is way off center. You can see the top of the corresponding next note in the series. And the, the back is, it's fine. You know, it's completely centered. So you have a misalignment of that first print. This one right here, I'm sure a lot of people have spent at one point. So it's a shifted shifted first print. It sold for $149.95. Who would have thought that that kind of money can be made on something like this? At one point, I didn't know, but now, now I do, and now so do you. So here's a very, very under-the-radar 2001 Denver uh, Roosevelt Dime. All right, so this one right here looks slightly off-center, but what we really have is another tilted partial collar, if you looked at the edge. You can see a partly struck reading, and then you have a very flat railroad-looking, you know, line that goes all the way around the edge. That's very standard for a partial, tilted partial collar, uh, where, like, the Lincoln set that we saw at the very beginning of the video, one side of the collar isn't completely seated up against the coin, so the metal flow has to go somewhere, and uh, bravo there, and that's what you got. This one sold for $18.50. Yep, pretty nice find. <clears throat> so I, I have a huge kind of like soft spot for uh, these die break cuts. So this one right here is just a magnificent example. It's a 1966. Nice earlier date, Lincoln Memorial Cent with a huge old cud die break. So the, the, the dies over the course of many strikes will begin to wear down. Like they always do. You, you begin to see little cracks little chips, and big old pieces of the actual die begin to crack and fall off, like in the case of this coin that you see here. Now, when a piece of the die falls off, it's not going to transfer any design in that particular void, with exception of just what you see here. You will have weakness on the corresponding side, so the, uh, the exact opposite side of the coin on the reverse, you'll have that big old void because there is nothing struck up right there. This one sold for $59.99. Yeah, if you guys are asking, that is that is the value of some of the bigger cuts out there. So keep that in mind. They are very desirable. People pay up for coins that look like this. Generally problem-free with larger cuts. They pay even more. So here's a nice ungraded 1944 Mercury Dime. Nice earlier coin. This one right here is struck off center by about 10%, maybe a little bit more. And this one sold for 200 bones, $200. It's so rare to see these type of coins ungraded. I, I'm so used to seeing these older obsolete design coins, whether it's this, Buffalo Nickels, Indian Head Sense. They're off center by 5, 10%. They're usually always in a slab. So it was refreshing to see a coin like this. It was probably purchased as an off-center coin at one point uh, and just never got graded. Okay, so there you go. Really nice coin. I like this one. So we have a newer National Park quarter. This time it's a Harper's Ferry, and it does exhibit a nice rim clip. Uh, it's a 2016P uh, Harper's Ferry. So uh, yeah, rim clips can exist on the newest coins too. I even saw one on a Salt River Bay, I would say about two months ago that someone had posted online. Uh, that looks eerily similar to this. I think that the clip was probably a little bit further south, probably more toward the nine o'clock position on the obverse. 
But this one right here is sold for $24.95. I mean, you know, it just, it is what it is. Who would have thought that a coin like this with uh, what, what would be considered a very minor error sell for $25? It's just a whole new world. Um, collectibles and coins and all that stuff, it, it's just, it's at its all-time high. And then coins like this benefit greatly as a result. So here's a newer... 1996 $20 Federal Reserve note. This is the uh, the larger head type. Um, uncolorized, uh, of course, unless you count like the $20 little overprint here. But what we have is a uh, back to front partial wet ink transfer. Okay, very rarely do we see that on these newer notes, but then, you know, there it is. So that's a, uh, a part of the reverse print. And usually when these notes are printed on their 32 note subject sheets, you know, the, the notes as they're being printed, or the full, full sheets, will sit on top of each other. So if there's an oversaturation of the ink, it will transfer onto the other sheet. And that's what you see here. So this one sold for $144.02. Okay, so it's a pretty nice, pretty nice return there. There's the back. Nothing's been, you know, uh, I mean, nothing unusual here on the reverse of the note. So here's another die break cut, this time on a 1946S. Very nice coin, other in fact that, you know, has some carbon spotting and other, you know, kind of environmental issues. Uh, again, another coin that, you know, it's easy to find. I've found a few of these over my cherry picking days, and it sold for $58.90. Uh, I could say this for sure. This coin has gone up quite a bit in price. I used to sell these all day long for like $10, $15, $20, and... Uh, you know, that's as recently as five, six years ago when I used to cherry pick through wheat scent bags uh, on a massive, like, record pace. I, I would find two or three of these in a bag. So, yeah, the prices have definitely come up. The grade is nothing to write home to mother about, but, you know, it is the error that you're looking for. Boom, brand new Salt River Bay 2020 Denver. This is the Denver minted type. This one exhibits a pretty nice strike through on the offers. Okay, so you got two separate little strike throughs, probably grease or something. Brand new quarters, guys, have some of the strangest errors because, again, the quality control is not there. They're trying to crank out millions upon millions of these coins to help counterbalance whatever coin shortage we had. So there you go. That's why the quality on these things stink. PU and uh, as collectors we benefit a lot. This coin here is sold for $23.95. So we got a couple co more coins. And I like to keep like some big ones toward the end. So if you guys like to cherry pick, just call what they call call C U L L coins at a local short show or a coin shop. This is a great variety for you. It's an 1854 O seated Liberty Quarter. Now, it's not just any 1854-O, uh, but it is the large, huge O variety. This thing is like twice the size of what a normal normal O mint mark is on the coin. Now, the coin is low grade. Look at it. We're talking probably fair to, you know, maybe AG3 on a good day. Uh, but, yeah, this is, this is a coin that's been cherry-picked quite often. And, you know, the coin has issues. I'm sure the coin has been cleaned at one point, and it's a very low grade. The, the reverse has an unusually high amount of wear and tear on there. But to give you an idea of how coveted this variety is, it sold for $245.58. That's a head shaker to me, man. But when it comes to the dedicated group of people that look for die varieties, especially on the older pre-Civil War coins, you can't you cannot stand in their way from spending their money. This is the market. And people are, you know, showing in a huge way how much these coins are worth, even in this condition. And then finally, we have a little bit newer $1 Federal Reserve note. Now, this one has some pretty strange kind of third print alignment issues going on. Uh, I mean, you know, this set of serial looks good here, but you got the other serial number that's way far south of where it should be. The black, the black district seal, the numbers here, the fours, uh, they're all off-kilter, man. 
So, yeah, this is a strange one. Uh, you, you don't see this that often. Uh, but, yeah, it's pretty cool nonetheless. Uh, this is a great conversation starter, if not a great addition to an error note collection. Uh, this one right here sold for $202.50. Just absolutely incredible. And uh, I find it just incredible the type of material that I'm seeing on eBay lately. Now, this is just about a day and a half worth of soul coins, and these are my personal selections. There's hundreds of errors and varieties that sell every day. So it just gives you an idea of how active not only the market is, but also the activity of people actually going out. They're cherry picking. They're going to the banks. Aside from trying to find silver and half dollar rolls, they're also going through penny rolls, nickel rolls. This is like very popular, and we've seen a lot of things on the press lately. We've seen Fox News do a puff piece on this. Some some of you have probably seen it on Yahoo News or something. There is also something by CNBC about coin roll hunting. Some joker making a hundred thousand dollars a year doing this. Uh, even though I interviewed an actual person that makes that kind of money, but believe me, it's the hardest work that you'll ever go through. Uh, it'll test your every fiber of your being. But there you go. That's the popularity of the sport for you. It's just pretty incredible these days, seeing all these people just find some incredible, incredible finds for us other collectors that like to just find them and buy them online. And people are paying a good deal of money for them. So if you got them, yeah, you might want to consider selling. The, the market is huge right now. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silver Round. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, that's a lot in all of your treasure hunting this weekend. And happy Halloween to a lot of you that's going to be participating in that. So, as always, like, share, subscribe. Hit that good old bell for instant notifications. And, as always, Coinaholics, we are discovering together. You guys take care.